We're doing a class today, super excited on it. It's going to be covering concealed carry, uh, all sorts of varieties on how to conceal carry, a lot of new shooters, going over fundamentals. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, we're going to do, I believe, some uh, work working around some cover garments, uh, off the body, on body, appendix, three o'clock, however everybody's carrying. I believe it's going to be a lot of uh, newer shooters. Um, so we're going to be going over, I believe the basics and stuff, which is great because to be honest, I don't go over the basics and the fundamentals quite as often as I probably should. And this is a great opportunity for me to do that. So I'm going to try to get some good footage up there, uh, of all the, uh, events or excuse me, not the events, but the, uh, courses of fire. Uh, I'm bringing two guns with me, sorry, three guns with me, but two that are in a concealed carry capacity. It's the uh, SIG P320 and the Glock 19. The 320 is the carry size, so pretty much the same gun. Um, in my opinion, the two best options for uh, concealed carry at the moment. And I'll be doing that in uh, two Kydex holsters, off the three o'clock and one's made by uh, Green Force Tactical and one's made by the, uh, oh God, NSR Tactical. Um, I believe you can go back to one of my other videos on concealed carry and check those out. I got a better uh, view or breakdown of those for you there and why I choose those. So. I mean, we don't do Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's different. Like when we come roll next time. Stand by. Oh. I think I brought a few So that second shot. Oh. Yeah, everybody's checking that. Oh! Check your support hand. Check your muscle rod. Fire. Can drop the trigger and holster. Check your muscle rod. Fire. Can drop the trigger holster. Fire. Okay, everybody, class is over. I'm back, and I just want to talk about some of the things I learned. Um, because, like I said in the beginning, this wasn't like a really in depth class into some really advanced techniques. It was catered around maybe new carriers and talking about different ways to carry and showing some options for a lot of people that might not know otherwise, right? So, um, my, my hands down, my favorite part of the class was going to be the bag portion. I got a couple of clips of there that you just saw of, of different types of bags and styles. This is not the actual uh, bag that I was shooting from. I did not take this one um, because I didn't know that's what we we're going to be doing. But that's not a problem because there was a lot of bags to choose from. There was some tactical uh, tailor bags, um, which are kind of like light, real light backpacks, day bag kind of stuff that's kind of catered towards um, maybe an EDC type thing where you would be carrying a 
some type of pistol or some type of firearm in it. Um, they had the vortex vertex bags. They had the uh, some hill people gear bags. They had some Haley strategic bags. They had some Patagonia fly fishing side satchel deals. They had fanny packs. There was a whole assortment of stuff to choose from and really get your hands on on different things to try out what you know you you see and then actually like put it into uh, action and be like, whoa, this is really cool or this is just horrible. This is not going to work for me at all. So that's the station I had the most fun at because I learned a ton, right? And um, well, here, I'll, I'll show you. This is, you know, I think even on the Hill People website, they tell you or their YouTube channel, they tell you this is how they um, would suggest to draw from their bag, you know, um, the, the, their chest bag, something like this, pull it open like that. And the cool part is learn, you know, you, you don't have to draw. You can just kind of rest like this at kind of like a real ready state. And then if you need to, boom, I you go. What I did to my bag when I got back was I set it up to where I can carry, um, uh, my Glock 19 in a holster because for me I carry one in the chamber and I for me to do that I want to have um, a good hard uh, holster not a soft leather holster or anything like that I want the trigger well to be protected right from anything that can get in there so came home and what I did was I took some velcro tape strips on an old holster I was not using this is in my opinion, not a good holster for EDC. It's the T-Rex arms one. It wasn't working for me, right? It might work for you, I don't know. But for me, it didn't work. So it just sat there. What I repurposed it, put the Velcro on there, a little 550 cord attachment here, okay? And then tuck it in like that. And then zip it up. And that's the inside compartment. I got another video up couple like about a month ago on how much this can pack out and some things I throw in there for a hike if you want to check that out too I'll try to link it at the end if I remember the front pouch if you've never seen one of these more or less the same stuff pockets things like that um, I'm in the middle of switching stuff up for different things that I'm gonna be doing here in the future so that's that the other portion of the class that was uh, not new to me, but it was definitely good practice. Was the uh, was the uh, one round reload, or yeah, one round. Excuse me, one round reload, one round, and then you do the admin top off, and then reholster, draw, fire, go empty, one round, reload, one round. Good practice. Nothing new there for me. Some people had never done that before, so it was great. I just took it as another opportunity to work on my draw and take real good methodical shots and work on my, uh, you know, the basics, the fundamentals, the grip, everything. Um, another portion that was uh, something uh, that I don't do was you'll see me flipping the uh, flannel. They have flannels for everybody to try out an over uh, coat or garment, you know, um, to get it out of the way and then draw like that. So that's not something I would do. I don't wear, un it's just not something I would do. But again, I'm trying to be a good student and I really wanted to do what I was getting uh, exposed to and I gave it my best shot and that's, you know, okay, um, I'm going to take with me what I want and I'm going to leave there what I want. But it's all good training. So nothing lost there. And I didn't say that on the one round reload one round, we were doing it all from appendix. I got a good uh, look into what appendix carry might be like for me because the holsters I have are pretty much, um, you can see, you can change it out. I mean, you don't have to carry it three o'clock. You, you carry it how you want. It fits right on your belt inside the waistband, but what it doesn't have that a, an appendix holster might have is that little, uh, deal out here to kick back in the uh, butt of the weapon so you don't print so much. But either way, I got to uh, use my holster as appendix, and that was cool. Another uh, 
station we did was the uh, the super close. Uh, I don't know the name of it, but where you you know you're up onto the target and you draw and you shoot into the pelvic girdle. Um, is that realistic for a lot of people? No, but it was pretty fun. It's cool, and it was supervised, super safe, and it exposed a lot of people to different styles of shooting. And you know, if if that situation, it'll probably never come up to where you're doing that. But what it does is it makes people a lot more comfortable um, with their firearm. And again, that was the overall scope of the course, I think. So, and that, and that definitely accomplished that because there's a couple of people that mentioned that, Hey, before today, I'm not carrying with a round in the chamber, but now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a lot more confident with myself and my equipment, especially to, you know, do that. Maybe after a few more range sessions, that's, you know, that's what they want to do. So that's up to them, but it's definitely great for building confidence. So overall, there is nothing better than in person, on the range, great instruction, training, whatever you want to call it, um, a class scenario that's laid out. Somebody's watching you, critiquing you, keeping you safe, making sure everything's run, uh, staying on track and things like that. So there's no substitute, absolutely no substitute in my opinion for uh, in-person classes for firearms training. There's nothing that's going to make you progress faster than doing something like that. There's a lot of great stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of resources out there. Um, I don't get into forums much, but I imagine there's all sorts of targets you can find, drill standards, this standard, uh, people doing examples on different platforms, and you can mimic all that stuff. But to have somebody who's really trained in that craft, giving you that attention of that, that critique, you know, um, there's no substitute that for that, in my opinion. And uh, you got to keep in mind, too, you've got to be a good student and receive that uh, information. You know, I mean, what they're telling you, you got to, you know, you got to process it and try to do what they're teaching you. And then at the end of the day, you know, chew on it and whatever you want to do, you do, because, you know, it's, it's all about your lifestyle and what you're doing. So I just wanted to highlight some of the things that are going on here in the Northwest. These are like monthly classes that are put on for free um, with a lot of local uh, support from people within the uh, firearms community here. And there's a strong community here, um, despite what people might think. Um, it's very strong and it's alive here, and that's a good thing. Um, I got a little clip of, uh, I think his Weapon Outfitters, they were out there. They had a little stand set up. Every time I would go to one of these, there's all sorts of people out there. And believe me, I'm not plugging anybody. I just want to say that people here are getting involved and putting back in the community. So at the end, I just want to say, please, please, please get some good training and get to know your equipment, get to know yourself and get outside and talk with people. It's the best thing you can do. Network.